Shamai, lesson 14 on how to read music on our bass ukuleles. So continuing on how to read music using the team strings double bass book. If you haven't got it, it is worth having because there are things in the book I don't cover and you can get hold of um, accompaniments, you know, so like back in tracks to go with it as well. So the pages today, pages 38, a little bit of 39, 40. We may have a quick look at 41 as well, all right? But I am starting to skip quite a lot of things now, either because they're not relevant for us and our base ukes or because I don't tend to do them in school, there's no need. And if you have got the book, of course, you can have a go of anything you like. You can go back, you can even go forward. So page 38, dotted crotchets. So this is a rhythm lesson. Um, I'm not actually sure what they're called um, in the US. Obviously you've got quarter notes. Um, now for us, a dot comes after the note. And in this case, it's a crotchet, but it doesn't matter whether it's a quarter beat or a crotchet, it's one beat, all right? And this is where the logical maths comes into it again. We did talk about it when we looked at dotted minims. So how do you work out how long a dotted note is worth? Well, you take the original note, in this case, a crotchet, black note with a tail, um, which is worth one beat. Okay, so have the original and halve it, then add it back on. So in this case, we're looking at the original being one, half of one is half, and add it on. So the whole of a dotted crotchet is worth one and a half beats. And it is often followed by a quaver, especially if we're in 4-4 um, four, four time. You've got to be careful not to miss that dot as well because it does alter the rhythm. So let's take a little look at the rhythm at the top of page 38. All right, it says clap, say and play the rhythm. Now you can certainly clap it, um, but you can't play the bass at the same time. So don't try and clap and play. I'll clap the rhythm out first of all whilst counting, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. That's just to give you an idea of how that rhythm goes. Clap it through, even play it if you like as well. So the first piece of music, Michael Row the Boat Ashore, very well known uh, piece. It starts with two upbeats. Now I'm pointing this out, I actually got asked this question, how to explain it the other day. So doing it now makes perfect sense. So first of all, the key signature, two sharps, so an F sharp and a C sharp. We're in four, four time, which means four beats in every bar, okay, or four beats in a measure. But if you notice, the very first bar has only got two crotchet beats, okay? And the last bar has got one minim beat, which is worth two beats, all right? So I will count us in carefully with this. And of course, we've got dotted crotchets and just having a quick look yeah they're all followed by quavers in this case okay d and g strings so michael row the boat ashore all right i'll count this time and remember those two upbeats so i'm going to go one two and on the three and four i'm going to start playing one two three four one two and three four one two three Four, one, two, three, 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 four, one
Don't forget you've got to hold those semi breathes for four beats and that last bar because it's only a half bar you only count to two before you stop so the next piece the muffin man um i love how it says rhythmically at the start i'm not sure how you play a piece unrhythmically anyway so four beats in a bar again we're on the d and the g strings and this time we've only got one sharp so it's going to be fourth finger on the d string for our f sharp so i counted for michael row the boat ashore this time i'm not going to count there's no upbeats or anything all right but you've got to count yourself when you're playing one two three four I stopped it dead at the end on purpose because if you notice there is a crotchet rest so how did you get on with those two pieces okay I'm trying now to speed things up a bit okay to help so the next piece we're gonna look at come by our another spiritual piece this is the top of page 39 um that's the only bit we're gonna look at the top section which is the melody but there is a reason why i do want to go over this one and it's to do with the time signature all right yes it's got dotted crotchets in it now i think everything we've done so far has been four four in other words four <coughs> crotchet beats in a bar or two four or three four this time the bottom number has changed so you can see the arrow pointing to that three, two, all right, three over two. I'm not going into the deep theory of this. All you need to know is that that two represents a minim. Four at the bottom means crotchet beats. In other words, one or four ones. Two at the bottom would be minim beats. So three over two means three minims in a bar basically do a little bit of maths and double your three four times so if three four has got three crotchet beats in a bar all right three two is going to have three minim beats in a bar and depending on the speed you can either count it three or sometimes it's easy to actually divide it into six just to make it that little bit faster to count for yourself let me just play you a little bit to explain all right this has got an upbeat as well so i'm going to first of all count four so i'm going to go one two three four and come in on the five six okay here we go one two three four five six one two and three four five six one two three four five six one two and so on okay so that's counting in six hopefully that's actually made you subdivide it which sometimes is quite necessary now i'm going to count in three so this time my upbeats are only going to be one two before i start playing on the three but you've got to actually do a lot more counting yourself then okay i know it sounds the opposite let's just try it one two three one two three one two three one two and so on all right so it's going to be entirely up to you which way you count it whether you divide it into six and count it that way when you've got these dotted crotchets that might make it a little bit easier or if you just count it in three and do the sort of subdivisions in your head 
I'm going to count it in three, okay? But I'm telling you now, I'm actually going to be tapping my foot with six, all right? One, two, three, 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 one, two, and you stop because it's an incomplete bar because it was an upbeat. And of course that one has got a little keyboard sign which means there is an accompaniment to go with it. So turning on to page 40, Edelweiss at the top of the page. I'm not going to play it now. It's, it's a lovely, lovely song. I just wanted to explain one little thing. Um, I love this song, but when I go to do it in school, it's a little bit of a nightmare because it's got the chords written above. Now, many of you learning these lessons are ukulele players, so you get chords and you, you know, you just ignore them. It isn't really anything to do with the way you're playing your bass. All right, as long as you ignore those letters above, all right, they are your chords to play and you've got the tune or the melody on your bass. And apart from the faffy chords, it's only actually got one dotted crotchet in it, all right? So we're not doing Edelweiss, we're gonna go now on to London Bridge, a nice English traditional. So we're back in D major, two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. 4-4 four, four time, all right, so four crotchet beats, no fancy counting with this one, all right. I'm going to keep it nice and steady, and I'm going to try and do it without counting, but I'll count us in, obviously. One, two, three, four. and a couple of rests at the end. And if you want to sing along while you're playing it, feel free. So we're going to skip donkey riding, double bass solo. All right, it's basically Frere Jacques, but in a minor key. I'm not going to look at it now, but. Okay, so if you've got the book, by all means have a go at that one. It's actually a very, very famous double bass solo and you think it's a bit easy but it's not it's it's much higher it's played um two octaves higher on the double bass it's sort of really quite scary all right um so we're going to finish today's lesson though with a nice scottish traditional one the loch lomond and i have been there so we're in d major this time we've got some notes on the a string as well all right, so two sharps, F sharp, C sharp. So that means it's going to be four finger on the A string. All right, we have got an upbeat. Now, you may notice there aren't actually dotted crotchets in here, but there is one little thing. All right, there is a quaver rest following a crotchet. So you're basically playing it the same rhythm that we've just been playing the dotted crotchets, but we've actually got to stop the note. All right, because there's a rest in there. So it should sound the same, except for the crotch. It should be slightly shorter. Right, let's do this one with counting to start with, okay? So I'm gonna count three and then we start. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, Two, three, rest. 
rest. It's not really a rest, it's just you've got to stop because of that upbeat at the beginning. Okay, one more time, a little bit faster. This will give you something to aim for. Okay, here we go. I'm not counting this time. One, two, three. to get on with that. So that's lesson 14, dotted crotchet done. And don't forget, you can always stop the video, practice, even slow it down by pressing the settings below. All right. Um, if I was teaching this in school, we'd have one lesson a week and I would be expecting the pupils to practice in between. Okay. I'm not expecting you just to be able to you know, read music and play everything perfectly to start with. If you've got the book, okay, I'm not going to cover the next couple of pages in the next lesson, all right? It's to do with slurs, which are a technique uh, for using the bow on a double bass. So that doesn't really apply to us. So if you want to go ahead and have a look at the next section, slurs, all right, there's nothing on the page we haven't already covered. You just ignore those new little markings. All right. If you've got a comment or a question, though, please feel free. Leave it below. Give us a like if you've enjoyed. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. Thank you for watching.